Lesson three. On lesson three, we seek counsel in regard to, do I need a companion now? In a sense, there are two questions there. First question, the answer is in Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So here we have a beautiful promise that all of our need will be supplied by God. But if we look at the opposite side of that, if we think we have a need that God doesn't consider our need, then someone else will supply. Uh, no doubt the enemy, Satan, will supply that. So it's very important to seek counsel of God and seek counsel of parents and those that are good at giving advice in the area of courtship and marriage and uh, making sure that we do have a need. But the second question is answered in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. So God has a timing. It's not just, well, should I have a courtship? But is now the time that I should have a courtship? <clears throat> and it mentions uh, this area of life in verse 8. It says there's a time to love. And then in verse 11, it says, He hath made everything beautiful in his time. If it's not at the right time, it's not beautiful. But when it is on time, it can be a beautiful thing. And so, as we come to this question, <clears throat> we want to find out with counsel, do I need a companion? And is now the time that I should conduct a courtship? Now, if you're already past that, why, well, uh, of course, you have to pick it up where you are. But still, these questions should be looked at. One of the biggest issues in do I need one now is am I old enough? And as we analyze what is the age that courtship is really safe to do, providing it's the right one, teenage years uh, were just not mature enough. In fact, uh, I suppose there are different studies, but the one that I heard about indicated that Young women mature between the ages of 21 and 23, and young men between the ages of 23 and 25. So then we would not recommend a, a courtship earlier than those times. And actually, as I have observed, those that court, it seems to me that those who don't start courting until they're between 25 and 30, that they are able to make wiser decisions. They sense their need of counsel more, and everything seems to work better. Now, during that time before we court, there's another question that needs to be considered, will it interfere with my education? Now, I don't believe that everyone has to receive a college education because there are other ways to 
earn a good living today. But <clears throat> if it is our plan to take schooling, it's better to wait until the schooling is finished for several reasons. <clears throat> Number one, we can be really focused on our education that way, get the best uh, grades and learn the most. <clears throat> because if we start a courtship and end up wanting to get married while we're still in school, then we have uh, other problems that come up. For instance, uh, the first year especially of marriage, even the first couple of years, it's very important to have adequate time for each other to build a good foundation. But if we are going to school, we kind of end up not spending much time together because we're pushed to make sure we can get decent grades and we have to take a lot of time for study. And then, of course, it's complicated by the fact that if both are trying to go to school, often uh, the wife, she decides to drop out and she thinks, well, it doesn't matter because uh, I'm, I'm going to be, ma I am married. And so she doesn't really have a burden to finish. But there are several things that can happen that would make it much better if there was. And a uh, continuation of the school. First of all, there's no guarantee the marriage will last. A divorce may come and then she may have to earn a living. Or he could die and she would need to earn a living. Also, later in life, when the children are out of the home, because I recommend mothers being with their children, I think it's much better for the children. But after the children are grown and they're out of the home, that way she can uh, have a good job and, you know, have a career as well. And... Also, in those years before having children, which might only be uh, a year or two, although I recommend waiting a few years before having children, unless you're getting married close to when you can't have children anymore, because uh, that way you can help to build a good uh, financial foundation. So it's really better for both to finish their education before entering into a courtship. Then we move to step number three, which is to counsel in regard to am I prepared? Today, uh, very few people that I have known felt that they needed to prepare. A few. A few uh, have said that to me. Like, I've even had young men tell me they want to own a house before they get married. And, you know, if that doesn't take too long, that certainly uh, would ease financial needs if the house was already paid for. But there are certain things that are really, really important. And the first one we're going to look at is, do I have sufficient health? The parties may not have worldly wealth, but they should have far, the far greater blessing of health. And in most cases, there should not be a great disparity in age. So here we have some good advice that 
it doesn't mean, you know, things like short sicknesses that we get over. But there are health conditions which can be passed on to the children and make their life hard. Uh, also, there can be uh, conditions, health conditions, that make it hard for either party to perform their duties as, uh, you know, a husband or a wife. And so that should be counseled about. And it mentions not a big difference in age. Uh, I've sort of, in my own mind, put a cap of 20 years being the maximum, although I think being within a few years of each other is even better. But uh, sometimes people marry that are 30 and 40 years uh, difference in age. Well, it may work okay for a while, but when the one that's older gets up in their upper years, it it really begins to be uh, a trouble and a, and a burden for the younger ones. So it's it's better to uh, make sure that we have reasonably good health. Of course, we never know what the future holds. We can't help if, if later on after we get married, some uh, serious condition comes around. But in that situation, you know, we just believe that God had in mind for us to to go through that experience. Another interesting uh, statement, most men and women have acted in entering the marriage relation as though the only question for them to settle was whether they loved each other, but they should realize that a responsibility rests upon them in the marriage relation farther than this. They should consider whether their offspring will possess physical health and mental and moral strength. So in God's eyes, marriage is not to be a selfish thing. It can't be selfish as far as, well, I want my needs satisfied. It's better to have in mind wanting to satisfy the needs of the other person. That's when marriage works the best. And the same is true about children. If we just say, well, we we really love each other, so it doesn't matter what we pass on to our children. That's kind of selfish because um, they have to put up with conditions all their life that are not easy. And again, even when you you plan the best, there could be some of those things happen. But we shouldn't go into it knowing that it's very, very likely to happen. So we need to think, what kind of inheritance will we give to our children if we get married? Now, some people try to pass it off by saying, well, we're not going to have children. But I have noticed that a lot of people who didn't want to have children or didn't plan to have children still had one or, or more. Uh, the most extreme case, I remember a friend of mine, she had a surgery to take care of not having any more children, but she had one anyway. And they already had about four, I think, so that was the fifth one. So, you you know, you really, if you're married, you can't guarantee that you won't have children. We've talked a little about the fact that the judgment needs to be mature. And uh, here's why. The good of society, as well as the highest interest of the students, demands that they shall not attempt to select a life partner while their own character is yet undeveloped 
their judgment immature. So there's two aspects here. Judgment. This is probably a pretty, a pretty far out illustration, but we don't give a chainsaw to a five-year-old child because we know that they don't have the judgment to understand, even if we explain it to them, they don't understand how dangerous the use of a chainsaw is. So, in a similar way, that is true when we choose to get married. We don't want to make the decision during the time that our judgment is not mature. Also, it mentions the character because the character is what essentially makes life enjoyable or not enjoyable. It's the character of the person we live with. So if the, if the character is not well developed and there's a lot of weaknesses, a lot of immaturities in the character, then it's going to make it hard on the other person to be happy living with them. And the bad part is that many of these we don't see before we get married, unless we take plenty of time for the courtship. But we sure can't hide them after marriage because we learn so much about each other when we live together. And also, uh, another one says, A youth not out of his teens is a poor judge of the fitness of a person as young as himself to be his companion for life. After their judgment has become more matured, they view themselves bound for life to each other and perhaps not at all calculated to make each other happy. So notice what is happening here. When they were not mature in their judgment, I mean, certainly they have some maturity, but they don't have enough. And so they pick a different kind of person than they will, say, five years later or six or seven. So if they get married young, then those five years go by or seven years go by and they don't even like the person that they married uh, because their ideas have changed. So it's better to let that maturity happen first. Then, instead of making the best of their lot, recriminations take place and the breach widens until there is settled indifference and neglect of each other. So things just start, uh, walls, I guess a good illustration, walls start being built, and uh, each starts going their separate way, and pretty soon the love is, is gone, because love is like a plant, has to be nourished, has to be watered, and so on to keep it alive and they may live in the same house uh, some even move into different bedrooms in the same house uh, for whatever reason they they don't want to break up and of course many others they just go ahead and say well i don't love my partner anymore so i might as well divorce so that's an important issue to be settled by talking to god and talking to our counselors.